Hi everyone, okay, this is Boris Spassky against Yasser Sirowan, which was played in Zurich in 1984. Spassky was, of course, the world champion from 69 to 72, and he was just a brilliant and very universal player. Sirowan is a very strong GM and four time US national champion, so you know, they're both very strong GMs. And Spassky was white, and he opened with e4, to which Sirowan replied d6. And that goes into the perk defense after d4 and knight f6. Then it was just normal developing moves for this opening. And here Spassky played bishop e3, which was a popular system at the time. He's uh, basically delaying the development of his light square bishop and first waiting to see how zero one will develop before deciding on a diagonal for this bishop. Uh, zero one played a6 and Spassky played a4 and then b6 clearly indicating a fiend shadow of the light square bishop of the dark side, so Spassky then plays bishop c4, saying that this diagonal would be strong for the bishop. And here Siroman played bishop b7, which is a bit dubious, because it allows white to advance in the center. Like nowadays, e6 is almost always played at this stage. Because after uh, bishop b7, then e4 is good for white. And uh, Siroman played knight e4. Which is uh, really better than exchanging on e5. If d takes e5, then d takes e5, queen takes d1, check, rook takes d1, and white would be better here. If bishop takes f3, then simply e takes f6 is winning material. After bishop takes d1, f takes g7, rook d8, and knight takes d1. So it's better not to exchange, and e4 is a good square for knight. It's the most aggressive and constructive response. So Spassky takes and uh, the bishop recaptures, and then knight g5, which is sacrificing the g-pawn in order to open up lines on the black king and gain a strong attack after bishop takes g2, which is what Siroman played. But this could almost really be regarded as a blunder, um, because uh, Spassky gets such a strong attack now. Like, probably best with just bishop b7 instead, although white would still have a superior development and the initiative is uh, favorable compared to the game continuation which was rook g1 and then came bishop c6 and queen g4 with uh, strong threats now already and uh, forcing really a passive pawn move from black which was e6 if uh, zero one would play something different like a5 here for example, then e6 would be very strong for white. After f5 and queen h4, h6 to stop the threat on h7, then knight f7 would be winning for white easily. And if instead of playing e6, exchanging on e5 would again be bad for black, or yeah, for black, sorry, after queen h4 and h6 again, now to stop the mate threat, then knight takes f7 is winning after rook takes f7 and rook takes g6. Bishop d5 to break that pin. d takes e5, bishop takes c4, queen takes c4, and the rook is still pinned, so c6 just hoping to play queen d5 to break that pin on the rook. But then rook d1 from white, and after queen c7, queen e6 is just absolutely crushing for white, like black is basically in Zugzwang here, where he can't make any decent moves. Meanwhile, white will be able to gradually, well, probably pretty quickly actually, build up an attack. And Fritz gives an advantage of 8 points of material here to the white side, so it's just not an option really for black. So, e6 was the right move at this stage. And uh, Spassky castled queenside. And here he's basically c completed his development and he's got strong, st strong threats like h4. And uh, if black were to answer with h5, then there could be a strong sacrifice on e6. With a crushing attack really after the queen retreats. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, the game continued anyway with knight d7, and then h4, and d takes e5. So here, if h5, then queen g3 and queen e7 just to support e6 but even then knight takes e6 f takes e6 queen takes g6 is winning for white 
the threats here on uh, e6. So say if black plays d5, then bishop d3. And it's absolutely winning for white. So d takes e5 was played to avoid all that. And Lesvesky took back. And then came queen e7. And here Svesky played a good move, he sacrificed the exchange, which definitely gives him the advantage, but he actually missed a, a simpler way to gain a strong attack without any material investment, and that was just by playing f4 instead, and he uh, has, you know, a, a strong attack here, um, and stronger in fact than rook takes d7, but still this is the one he went for, and is more or less equally as strong. So, um, Bishop takes d7 was played by zero one, and then especially played h5. And here zero one crumbled really and blundered. He played f5, uh, but even with the best defense here, he was in trouble. Like for example, if he plays rook f8, then knight takes h7 is very strong, and the knight would have to be left alone really. Like if the king takes it here. Then h takes g6 check, king g8, g takes f7 check, queen takes f7, bishop h6 is crushing. So the uh, knight would have to be left alone. And say with the best play from both sides, then bishop takes e5, and h takes g6, f5, queen takes f5, it's okay because the pawn is pinned. And then bishop takes b2 check, it looks strange, but is correct play, so after king takes b2, then queen b4 check, bishop b3, queen takes b3 check, c takes b3, e takes f5. But even then, white would have bishop h6, and again, he's winning here. He's got a three points of material advantage in terms of position. So, even with the best defense, it's lost for black at this stage. After f5. So Svesky played queen h3, and came f4, and h takes g6, with the uh, mate threats on h7. So, oops, hold on, yeah, so there's mate threats on h7 now, so bishop takes e5, and now the queen is defending h7. But then uh, Svesky played knight takes e6. And after bishop takes e6, bishop takes e6 check. And it's uh, not looking good at all now for black. Zero one played king g7, but here it's made in seven moves after g takes h7 check. And here zero one resigned because, well, there's no escape. Um, yeah, that's it. And we could have a look now at how the mate might go. Um, I'll give. I'll show you what Fritz recommends. It's just Queen G5, but uh, I mean that's just sacking the Queen. But it's crazy. So let's see. And then King F6, and then H8 Queen Shank. Um, it's quicker here to. Like I mean, it, it takes longer for White to mate if Black doesn't take the Queen here with his rook. If he takes with the rook then it's made in 3 and if he moves the king it's made on 5 so let's have a look. King e7 and then uh, queen h7 check bishop g7 queen takes g7 check rook f7 yeah I mean look at it it's just absolutely all over yeah that's it okay so that's it a brilliant game from Spassky. I'll replay it with the threatened squares highlighted just so you can see it from start to finish. And it was a perk defense, which is not completely unheard of at top level, but it's still fairly uncommon. It's a relatively new opening. It's uh, only been around for 60 years or so, which, you know, compared to some of the openings like the King's Gambit and what you will, which is. I thought centuries old. Um, it's relatively new, and it was initially considered quite dubious. But some uh, a lot of players gave it some deep analysis, and it's been found to be fairly playable. 
so it's so one to consider anyway. It's definitely not very well known. Like if you knew the lines well, you could probably get an advantage with it playing it online because against e4, you know, most people go for the Sicilian or Caracan or what you will. So it's uh, might be one worth learning. I don't know it at all well myself. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.